So what is going on in the world right now? To date, as of Saturday, March 14th, there have been 150,000 coronavirus cases with approximately 5,700 deaths. Across the world, fear is mounting, anxiety is gripping so many of our hearts because we are all facing a very real and urgent threat. I mean, think about it. All of Italy is quarantined. An entire country is quarantined. And I I read um, earlier today that Italy is being described as a war zone. Now, let me ask uh, this question. How does that make you feel? Are you... Afraid, according to one projection in the New York Times, uh, they are projecting that between 160 million and 214 million people in the U.S. could be infected with the coronavirus over the course of this epidemic, and as many as 200,000 to 1.7 million people in the U.S. could die. That's some scary numbers. So so let me ask you this question. When times are this uncertain, not only asking the question how does it make you feel can be helpful, but think of it this way. Where do you turn? When times are uncertain in your life, where do you turn or who do you turn to? As I think about my own life, when fear and worry and the news um, begins to dominate my world, um, if I'm honest, uh, it, uncertainty can make me very anxious and uneasy. And for many people, these kinds of events stir up an emotion called hopelessness because the ultimate outcome is out of our Hands. I mean, what do you do? Where do you ultimately turn for hope when a pandemic spreads across the globe? You know, the the prophet Isaiah, um, a book in the Old Testament, the book of Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah, 2,700 years ago, in Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 2, listen to how Isaiah in the Bible describes his land. It's described as a land of deep darkness, a land of deep distress, deep anguish, deep gloom. I mean, not much has changed since 2,700 years ago. I mean, can we not relate to that language, uh, language, that language today, to that kind of darkness and distress and gloom and anguish? In fact, in Isaiah chapter 8, what people began to do because the situation was so hopeless is that people began offering hope to the hopeless, but ultimately it ended up being false hopes. And and Isaiah says, look, look, in chapter 9, none of this, none of this, none of this, not hand sanitizer, not disinfecting spray, not toilet paper, none of this, the prophet Isaiah says, nothing earthly as good as that stuff can be will ultimately ever fill the void in the human heart that is gasping for eternal hope. You know, I've heard it put, maybe you've heard it put this way, that there is this God-shaped vacuum in every single human heart, every man, every woman, every child, and nothing on this earth can ever fill the void that we feel in our, feel in our lives um, uh, unless it is filled with God. And in Isaiah chapter 8, the, the Lord um, speaks to Isaiah, the, his prophet, and he says, I want you to tell the people to stop putting their trust, their ultimate trust in false hopes, to, to not fear nor be in dread because the Lord of hosts the God who has ultimate power over everything that happens in our universe, who has power over every living creature, that the Lord of hosts, 
to not fear nor be in dread because he is our hope. Isaiah chapter 8 says, let him be our fear. Let him be our dread. Then we will find rest. We will find sanctuary in whatever is going on in our society because our hope first and foremost is put in God. I mean, it is so awesome in times when we are most anxious, most fearful, most worried, most restless. The Bible offers real hope. Isn't, isn't that amazing that, that in Christianity, our hope is real? Like if Jesus Christ, we're, we're approaching the Easter season, if Jesus Christ rose from the grave, there is hope today. Look, I love life. I want to live forever. I do not want to get the coronavirus. Life is so enjoyable and so good, but it is an important reminder that this life is not our ultimate hope or anything that happens uh, during our lifespan. Thanks be to God that our hope in Jesus transcends our fears, our hope transcends our worries, our hope transcends our anguish and our gloom, any darkness. Our hope in Christ transcends the world, the flesh, and the devil. Even life itself is transcended by our hope. Like many of you, I am tired of pain and suffering. I'm tired of famine and sickness and disease and sorrows, but I am going to refuse to make any humanistic solution, as good as they may be, and some of the solutions are really good, but I'm going to refuse to make any humanistic solution my ultimate hope on this earth. And I'll tell you why. It's because in Christ alone, our hope is found. He is my light, my strength, this cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. Think of what we are facing today. Even more, think of how you're feeling today, what you're going through, and what you're battling. What are you most worried about? I mean, ultimately, most of us are worried, first and foremost, of death. Let me tell you, and I want you to think about this. If Jesus rose from the grave, and he did, you can have hope today. Don't be tempted to proclaim in your heart that the battle is mine. I can fix this. Like I got this, my strength, my power. No, you and I need to be saved. We desperately need a savior. See, this is the great thing about Christianity. In Christ and his work, his birth, his death, his life, his burial, his resurrection, his ascension, and his second coming. I mean, it's awesome. Jesus is coming Again, in Christ, the greatest thing, we are guaranteed victory in the end. So any battle we are facing in our country, in our lives, in the world, we are now fighting from victory in the risen Christ, not for our victory. Listen, God loves you. John chapter 3 and verse 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Romans chapter 10 says that whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Right where you sit or stand right now today, would you truly put your faith in Jesus Christ as your Savior? Would you transfer any worries, any anxiety, any hopelessness, any fear to the cross of Christ and receive right now, today, the hope of Jesus. Would you, would you pray with me today to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior? Why don't you pray something like this? God, thank you so much for sending your Son to die in my place on the cross. I believe that you love me so much that you came to this earth to die for all of my sins. And Jesus, right now, I am accepting you as my Savior. I am accepting you as the free gift of eternal life. Right now, Jesus, I am trusting in you 
to be my Savior, no matter what I am going through. You know, if, if you prayed that and you meant that with your entire heart, your entire being, the Bible says that you are saved and you can never lose your salvation. As I close, my hope and prayer is that God would help you to find rest in Christ. As fear mounts, remember our hope in the face of uncertainty. St. Augustine once said, Thou hast made us for thyself, O Lord, and our heart is restless, restless as the leaves until it finds its rest in thee. Psalm 62 says, Find rest, O my soul, in God alone. My hope comes from him. He alone is my rock and my salvation. Romans 15 says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. You know, there have been a lot of people infected with the virus, and there's been a lot of deaths. But also, 74,000 people have, thanks be to God, recovered from the coronavirus, according to World Omedin. And I pray as a country that not only will God heal us physically, but that God would use these tough times to draw many of our hearts back to himself. God bless you all. If you feel led to give to the ministry of Steamtown Church during these hard times, it would be much appreciated. We desire at Steamtown to stay faithful to the mission of Jesus as we ensure to give every man, woman, and child repeated opportunities to hear and see the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. God bless you.